will start the class. Only 17 people are here. Okay. Okay. So previous class we finished till uh, this no satellite two types of satellite satellites we have finished that uh, those were like geostationary satellites and polar satellites. Two topics or uh, two three topics are left out from uh, the previous chapter that uh, that is the gravitation and rotational motion chapters. Okay. So we'll finish. Someone was asking in the previous class about the escape velocity. So we'll learn about escape, escape velocity today. Okay. So let's begin. Okay. So <clears throat> we study about the uh, study uh, I mean, about the satellite now. Related to satellite, one topic is that that is known as energy of satellite. How satellite revolve uh, or energy? Okay, that is known as, or energy is calculated. How energy of uh, that satellite is calculated? So see, satellite uh, generally it is revolving around Earth. So we consider that uh, the man-made satellites. Okay, the energy. So the satellite revolving around the Earth has a potential energy as well as kinetic energy. It will have potential energy as well as Kinetic. Now tell me why it has potential energy and why it has kinetic energy. Anyone? Come on, attempt. Kinetic energy is what? By virtue of motion. And it is by virtue of its position. So, the satellite will have potential energy because it remains in gravitational field of the Earth. Okay. Gravitational field of Earth. That's why it has potential and kinetic energy is because by its motion, it is moving. So from here, we can see that the total energy of this satellite is given as same kinetic energy plus potential energy will be equal to G. What is kinetic energy formula? 1 by 2 mb square. That is only no. What you people are not all respond. Yes, so kinetic energy under the field of gravitation, the kinetic energy will be written as G E small m by two R E, where this M E stand for mass of the Earth, and this small for small m stand for mass of the satellite, and G is gravitational constant, capital R. And this E stands for radius of the earth. This 2 is for half that kinetic energy. Okay. So this plus G E. Just write on there and see. Uh, it is not that important. But okay, you should know about this. Okay. How to calculate. Sometimes it may be asked or I have not seen any questions from this. But okay, we will study about this. Potential energy formula is this. Okay. So total it can be turned as minus G M E by 2 R E. This is the total energy of satellite is calculated by this. Okay. So remember this is not that important, but okay. So no. Next one is topic in this chapter is escape velocity. So escape velocity is what you know. Escape velocity is the minimum velocity at which a body should be projected from surface of the earth so that it goes out of the goes out of the gravitational field of earth and then never return to earth okay and that velocity is known as k velocity or in other word you can write uh, you can tell that it is minimum velocity required by a body to go out of uh, again that go out of gravitational field is called scape velocity. So you can write on the definition of the scape velocity. Okay. Minimum minimum velocity required. Okay. Required by body to go, go out of gravitational field of earth. Okay. So this is uh Escape velocities definition the minimum velocity required by a body to go out of the gravitational field of the earth is called gravitational uh, escape velocity. Okay, and it is given as the escape, uh, the value of escape velocity is okay, the value of escape velocity is 11.2 kilometer per second. This is the value of escape velocity. Okay. 
and scale velocity is calculated by this is scale velocity v e equals root under g capital r e where g, g stand for acceleration due to gravity and r e is radius of the earth okay or this can be also written as g m by R E okay, where M is mass of the earth. So these are the formula to calculate scale velocity and scale velocity value. You can write this was asked to once. Okay, what is value of scale velocity? So eleven point two kilometer per second. This is okay, and the value of you know the uh, this is uh, again some fact about the scale velocity is what you know <coughs> scale velocity or the value of value of scale velocity scale velocity is independent of is independent of, of mass of the body so the velocity this uh, value of scale velocity does not depend on the mass of the body which is going out of the gravitational field of the earth it is it is independent of that okay so generally satellite are launched with this only the scale velocity or how much velocity i mean with the calculation of the scale velocity then these satellites are launched okay so this is all about the scale velocity understood any doubt in this shall we move sir i'm audible come on man just yes someone is speaking something tell sir if you, you say the value of scale velocity is independent of mass of the body that mean it is common for all the things sir if we launch a rocket or if we launch any other thing it is uh, velocity is 11.2 km it need to pull out the thing in the gravitational field right sir i'm oh, sorry bharat i didn't get you can you once again repeat sir the, the, you written the value of escape velocity is independent of mass of the body sir yes so yes so that mean it is common for all the thing yes whatever like whatever things to like uh, for example you take satellite any type of satellite no the weight of satellite yes. will be it will not depend on that weight of that satellite or anything okay, okay sir it is independent of that okay 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 sir so doubt sir it's clear thank you sir okay and one more fact about the scale velocity is what you know on moon moon surface this is for earth surface for moon surface it is the value of scale velocity is how much 2.38 km per second why because there is no atmosphere around the moon no that's why so it is uh, the value of scale velocity on moon surface 2.3 this much needed from uh, this is the scale velocity on surface of the moon okay so right now okay now we'll move on to the one more finish shall we move any other doubt you can ask now or we'll move okay If you are not speaking anything, I'll I'll assume that everyone has understood. So next topic in this the last topic of this uh, chapter is that is known as Kepler's law. Okay, whatever way you can pronounce it, is Kepler's law. So Kepler he gave he was the scientist he gave three law. Okay, and this is also known as uh, Kepler's law of planetary motion. Okay, law of planetary motion so he gave this three scientific law describing describing motion of planet around the sun so the first law is known as law of orbit okay law of this is the first law of kepler's law which is known as law of orbit it says that this law says that all planet move around move around the sun elliptical elliptical uh, okay having sun at one focus on focus of the orbit this is the first law of this this is the first law of uh, kepler's law which is also known as law of orbit okay so it says that all planet move around the sun in a elliptical uh, orbit having sun at focus okay uh, similarly for example this is the sun it has got own path like all elliptical there is one path no so sun is always at focus so all planets move around like this okay sun is at focus so this is the law first law says second law of this planetary motion is known as law of area okay this law says that according to this law the aerial 
the aerial speed of a planet around the sun is constant that means see we'll take this as one this is one we'll take this orbit okay this is one orbit sorry one second properly we'll draw this is one orbit okay just consider and so what happens suppose this is orbit if this planet is moving from this is the sun so this will form our, this planet is moving from here to this place to this place okay so this place with this this much area this planet has covered in time you take power time as delta t because change in time and area as a1 okay and suppose again at some point again the same this planet move from point here this point to this point again this again this will be taken as delta t time will be delta t and this area will be a2 so what happened the amount of time taken from this area this equal area you know from this area to this area will be same from here to here so speed of this planet speed of this uh, planet is always constant in covering same equal amount of area suppose you can write a1 equals to a2 so this is the area area law speed so this is what the second law of this says okay it covers the aerial speed of the planet on the sun is constant okay it does not vary like it will not change from here to here it, uh, it will have some speed from here to here and it will not have some speed from here to here okay so this is what it will be always equal this is the second law of Kepler or second law of planetary motion says the third law says that third law is known as law of time period okay this law says that the square of the period of revolution revolution of any planet around sun so is directly proportional to the law of its mean distance from the sun okay, this is the third law of planetary law of uh, this Kepler's law says that and it is known as law of the time period this says the square of the time period of revolution of any planet around the sun is directly proportional to cube of its mean distance from the sun that is written as t square is directly proportional to a cube where t square is time period revolution of time this planet and a is distance from the sun and this is generally uh, used to find you know the time period or the distance from between the two planets to find out between the two planets so this is the third law of planetary motion so here this chapter we are finishing next we are going to enter into next chapter that is so next chapter we are going to discuss that is property of matter where we are going to see about different property of uh, solid liquid and gases so next chapter it is properties of matter okay physics we are going to discuss about this so in this property of matter the first property comes is elasticity tell me anyone know about the elasticity sir whether it is the Hooke's laws of elasticity yes elasticity is Come on, you, you are right to speak, man. So, like the stress is directly proportional to strain that elasticity. Okay. Yes, yes, that is okay. That's the Hooke's law you are telling. But what is the definition of elastic elasticity? I'm asking. So the maximum stress uh, expandable limit. Okay. Partially, okay, okay. So, we are going to see about the elasticity. Okay. Good. See, try to give answers. Okay. From uh, See, once you are starting, start preparing for like defense exam, once you are starting the preparation of defense examination for any examination, be bold because in SSB they are uh, definitely you need to be more confident than uh, other people. Okay, you should have you should have a lot of confidence and uh, by speaking in class, don't feel shy in asking questions, speak in the class. If you have no answer, speak out. Okay, this will boost your uh, confidence. Confidence. Okay? 
Inmates to the initial position up to early mid. Yes. See, generate definition. Okay, we are going to see. Good. So now people are coming up with answers. Good. So elasticity says that okay. Elasticity is what? It is. It is property. This is the bookies definition. So you should know this. Okay. It is the property of material of a body by virtue which the body acquires acquires its original shape and size after the removal of deforming force okay now you understood reforming force so this is the definition of elasticity when you are applying some force on a body it changes its size and shape and when you remove that force it will again regain its original shape and size that is what called elasticity Sir, this elasticity as well as this Young's model is both are same elasticity and Young's model is Young's modelers. Yes, yes. Uh, those are same only, but uh, see, generally this uh, we deal this uh, elasticity in what stress upon strain. And Young's modelers is about what you know. Young's model of elasticity is about longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain. Okay, that three thing is the Young's modelers or uh, bulk's modelers or uh, rigidity rigidity modelers. Okay, so those three things are there. Okay. So, it is under that topic those things are there okay okay, okay. and uh, in this last if you, if you see you need to uh, first understand what is strain then we'll go to that hooks law you are talking about that hooks law no stress upon strain first you should know about what is stress and what is strain but i don't know about the stress okay so a stress is what the restoring force the restoring force per unit area set up inside the body inside the body subjected to is okay, subjected to Reforming force. This is called so it is stress is what the restoring force for unit area set up inside the body subjected to deforming force. Okay. So this is the stress. Now we are going to see, we'll see about this strain. What is strain? Stress is a restoring force. You can by in other language, I mean in other words, you can use it as restoring force. Next, it is strain. Okay, what strain? Strain is what the relative change in dimension. The relative change in dimension or shape of a body which is subjected as you be, which is subjected to a stress, which is subjected to stress is called strain. So it is relative change in dimension or shape. Okay, when body changes, so that relative change is strain. Okay, these are the definition of stress and strain, and its unit, the elasticity is unit. Uh, okay, we will see this later on that. Okay. So here, Hooke says that you know, Hooke's law is there. Okay, someone was talking about this Hooke's law. He says that. The ratio of stress to strain is constant for the material of stress to strain. Sorry, strain is constant for the material. Okay. For the material. And this is also, it is given as E equals to elasticity, elasticity equals to stress upon strain. Okay. This is what Hooke's law is given. It is also called as modulus of elasticity elasticity and this uh, again someone is asking about what is young's modulus okay about the young's modulus so yeah an si unit uh, right on first si unit si unit of this is newton per meter square this is the si unit and its value is this elasticity value is different for different uh, value is different for you know different material it is not same for uh, every material it is different for for different material 
these are the facts about them then we'll see about two or two <clears throat> see it is measured by ratio of change in length see if it is measured it is measured by of change in length to the original length original length then this is only calculated by given this is calculated by young's modulus that is okay young's modulus this was given by young, uh, the scientist name i think so young's modulus was. so this modulus is given this is called young's modulus and uh, of elasticity elasticity if it is measured by ratio of change in length to the original length okay then this is given by this young's modulus of elasticity this is y equals to okay it is known as longitudinal longitudinal okay longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain okay so this strain is what longitudinal strain is change uh, sorry longitudinal strain is the original length okay this is one longitudinal strain and this is the change in length stress okay this is how it is calculated in length understood someone is asking about this young's no young's model this is what okay okay sir and the next one again one more thing is that that is called bulk's models okay that is, is what you know if there is change in value if there is change in uh, volume volume to original volume then it is given by a scientist name as bulk uh, this you can write one or two okay this is young's one this is given a bulk his name was bulk so this model is named as bulk's modulus of elastic and it is equal to volume of stress or volume of stress by volume strain what is volume strain anyone volume strain is what or volume stress is what this is the change uh, original no volume strain is what original volume and this is change in volume remember this okay, so if this is all about the elasticity so let me move understood so that uh, bulk model the formula is uh... Original volume of stress uh, divided by change of uh, volume as strain, sir. No, 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 no. Volume of <clears throat> original volume is what you know. This volume of strain. Okay. Similarly, the same. This only. <clears throat> there is volume of change in volume by original value volume. Okay. That is only given by volume of stress by volume of strain. Okay. Yes, sir. That's all. So my doubt is like uh, the the volume of stress divided by volume of strain, right, sir? Yes, yes. Yes. And it is given a bulk model is given by K. Okay, so K K equals right on this K. This is what. <clears throat> so let's move on. Okay. So next topic uh, of this is uh, property of matter. Next topic is pressure. What do you understand by what pressure? Lot of pressure is there, no? You people who have lot of pressure preparing for examination. So tell me what is pressure? In simple word, tell me. Force acting on a particular area is called pressure. Yes. So applying force in a vertical, vertically, sir. Go, go, go ahead. Why did you stop? Okay. As someone has told, force is defined as force acting normally on a unit area of surface. In simple word, force. Acting normally on unit unit area of surface is called force, and it is given by pressure. Okay, that is pressure equals to force by area, or you can write down A equals to F by A. What will be SI unit? Newton per meter square. Yes. Newton per meter square. Okay, so this is the uh, about the fall, uh, pressure. And this is also called as, you know, this unit is also written as 
onward unit is there for this. This is also a term as Pascal. You, Newton per meter square also you can write. Pascals also you can write. Like uh, 10 Newton, like you got, for example, 10 Newton per meter square or 10 Pascal or uh, PA, okay, PA. Or you can write like TPA. This is also fine, uh, same unit, okay? This is understood as. Got it? Now we'll see some applications of this uh, pressure. And yes, uh, this is pressure. This force acting point. If <clears throat> pressure, pressure is exerted by liquid, okay? One more thing is there in pressure in liquid that is calculated by if the pressure is, is exerted by liquid at depth h, okay? Below the surface of liquid is given as P pressure equals to H T G. Okay. Now H is the depth of that. Okay. It's a depth at what that uh, body is there from the surface. And uh, D is what density of the. Can I, D is density of liquid. Density of liquid. And G is what? Acceleration due to gravity. So this is how a pressure generated by liquid at depth that depth h below the surface of liquid is given as this in the formula to calculate. So remember this. Now we'll see some applications of I mean the, this concept of pressure. And pressure is a okay, what device name is manometer. Okay. We'll uh, again we'll read about that. Uh, we'll learn about atmospheric pressure where barometer is uh, barometer measured with uh, pressure of atmosphere, but this pressure is measured by manometer. So some examples of this, if you see pressures, examples of like uh, applications of pressure. What you know, the packs. Listen and write down if you want to write down. The packs and suitcase are provided with you know broad handles, so that the small pressure is exerted on hand while carrying them. A railway tracks, uh, say example, railway tracks are laid on a large side wooden sleepers or now it is cemented sleepers have come both or no, we have seen. So that the thrust due to weight of the tra train is spread over the area. So pressure is less. So these are the examples of pressure or applications of pressure. Now if you see, there is concept, one more thing that is atmospheric pressure, okay? atmospheric pressure. Okay, so what do you mean by atmospheric pressure? Simple term, pressure exerted by atmosphere. Atmosphere is called atmospheric pressure. Another definition of this atmospheric pressure is given as what you know, there is long and uh, very scientific uh, definition that is you can write down this. So atmospheric pressure is pressure, okay, which is exerted by by mercury column of 70 at 0 degree celsius at 45 degree at sea level this is another one definition of this pressure and generally it is measured by measured in bar okay it will be written as uh, like this uh, bar b a r bar and one bar equals to 10 to the power of 5 newton per meter square okay this is value of one bar okay and it is measured this atmospheric pressure is atmospheric pressure is measured by a device known as barometer okay this is device name barometer it measures the atmospheric pressure now some facts about uh, this atmospheric pressures are you know what atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure decreases okay this symbol decreases with altitude okay what do you understand by this altitude so height of the earth uh, from yes surface. height height from the surface of earth altitude means you can write down height from surface of earth that's why because of this only what happens 
because uh, at a high altitude in mountain area, you know, pressure is less. That's why it is very difficult to cook in mountain area. Okay, especially like what um, uh, rice or something like. Uh, it is very difficult. That's why you know, mountain <clears throat> in mountain they use this pressure cooker. That's why it was invented because of this only. So first, because of this small break, uh, in decrease in atmospheric pressure at altitude, you know, difficult to cook. And also, if you see, that's why, you know, the uh, this also, if you have traveled in aeroplane or you might have, uh, any news you might have seen, that is what, you know, the fountain pen of a passenger leaks. Fountain pen of passenger leaks in aeroplane. And because of this only, because uh, there is less pressure. So these are the examples of this and also seasonally what happened, why it is difficult to cook, you know, what happened, boiling point, no? boiling point of the substances increases with increase in pressure and decreases boiling point. This, sometimes these questions are there, okay, what happens boiling point also, right on this, boiling point of substances increases with increase in pressure, okay? increase and decreases similarly, decreases with decrease in pressure, remember these things. So this is all about the atmospheric pressure <clears throat> and uh, one more thing that you know uh, about the barometer we are talking about this barometer no if there is sudden fall how this uh, weather forecast no those those people how they calculate how it is going to be uh, rain or something like that okay so if there is sudden fall some questions are there from this also okay this is sudden see if there is sudden fall Sudden fall in <clears throat> barometer reading, then this is the indication of what storm. Okay, if there is sudden fall, this is indication of storm. This is first thing. Second thing is what you know, slow fall. If there is slow fall in barometer, slow fall, then it is indication of rain. So remember these two things about this barometer reading. If there is sudden fall, it is going to be storm. And if it's slow fall, it's going to be rain. Okay. So these are all about this. So this was all about atmospheric pressure and this. Next, we are going to see the another uh, property of matter that is, and that is given by, you know, one law is there, that law we are going to, that is Pascal's law. In previous, we have seen the SI unit of uh, pressure is written as you know pascals also so we are going to see what this pascals law okay, so what this pascals law says yes so pascals law states that or pascals law states that pressure in a fluid is same everywhere everywhere if the effect of gravity can be neglected. So Pascal's law says that basically this Pascal's law says that see a pressure in a liquid and everywhere. Suppose you take on balloon. Okay. You can do this experiment at your home. See you take a balloon, fill this balloon with water, make some holes like this. Here, here, here. And the water will come out of the, all the holes equally. Okay, and suppose you apply the pressure anywhere on this balloon, the same amount of water, again, the, with, with the force, the same amount of water will come out of every, this hole. This is what this Pascal's law says. He say that pressure in a liquid is same everywhere. This pressure will be everywhere. Here also same, this point also same, this point also same, this point also. So everywhere pressure will be same only in this balloon. This is the best examples of this pressure uh, in a liquid. For example, of this Pascal's law, the use of Pascal's law are what you know. Examples of Pascal's law are hydraulic lift. P R A U L I C. Hydraulic lift. Lift is there. You might have seen, especially bikes nowadays. There is disc brake. Your uh, boys, you people will know, you know, boys. Come on, tell me. Disc brake is there. There is small. Uh, on box type is there uh, on your handle. What is that? There is liquid field in that. That is, that works on the basis of what? Hydraulic brakes. Okay. It is called hydraulic brakes. 
what happens it is like box is there break when break is the liquid is filled here okay and it is connected to somewhere it is connected to break some so when and there is one uh, stopper like when you apply this break it pulls this liquid okay and there is also one stopper which is attached to the disc of the bike or any vehicle so this pressure same amount of this the amount of pressure applied here will push this liquid further and the same amount of pressure will be applied on the disc of the brake okay and the uh, vehicle stops so this is what the applications of pascal's law hydraulic example you can write hydraulic lift hydraulic brakes hydraulic press etc or this okay examples of uh, this pascal's law you can do this experiment at your home you will understand what is pascal's law okay the pressure is everywhere same this is the example next topic is what you know next property of this is one more uh, topic that is name as force of bionant or bionancy you might have heard bionant force tell me anyone what is bionant force so bionant force says that okay we'll see in this condition okay there are uh, some conditions okay we'll see first what bionant force is when the body is immersed, immersed partially or fully or wholly you can write wholly in a liquid a force a force act on the body by by the liquid in upward direction upward direction okay and this force so this force is called as force of bion okay so this is the force of bionance or bionant force force of bionant okay for example see what by this we can understand suppose this is a uh, container this is container and it is uh, filled with water okay if you drop a something like drop something or uh, some body something in this body okay so this when you drop this this will have a force that is mass into acceleration due to gravity mg a force will be applied got it this body will have mass and this acceleration due to gravity downwards same time so what happens this liquid will apply some force on this body okay in upward direction it will try to push this in upward direction this liquid okay this force this upward direction force is known as this force of bionant okay understood sure. got it and this says that this by force of bionant says that the four right on the force bionant is equal weight of the liquid displaced okay weight of the liquid this is the force of bionant is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced okay, suppose uh, this container is full with water and uh, you drop some body how much amount of water some amount of water will comes out of that no uh, this container so that water which came out of this container will be equal the weight of this spray equal to the force of this bionant and this was this was first discovered by a scientist name as archimedes He was the scientist who discovered this while he was bathing in tub. He found that okay. Later on, more that they, he gave one principle that is known as archimedic principle. We'll talk about that, but he discovered this uh, okay thing. And some more thing about this force of bionancy we are going to see that is the bionant force. Right on the bionant force, the bionant force exerted by liquid exerted by liquid depends on the volume of solid object immersed okay. immersed in the liquid. This is first thing. If the bionant force exerted by liquid depends on it always depends on this volume of the solid. Okay. Which is emerged in that liquid. Second thing, the, again, this violent force, force of exerted by liquid 
depends on density density of the liquid density of liquid when it's this solid uh, so it's uh, always this force of ion entry depends on volume of so volume of solid and it depends on density of the liquid when it's the solid object is immersed so this was the about all about the force of ion entry next we are going to see about one more of what i was talking about who gave this principle no this academic the scientist name is academic we will talk about that then we will see what a the scientist name science is principle so this principle says that See suddenly, what this fellow, this atomic principal was, uh, this atomic scientist was bathing in a tub. He suddenly notices that some water, uh, what got displaced, is equal to the weight of that uh, apparent loss. Then see what happens. Uh, when you drop some object in a container, there will be the actual weight of. There will be some apparent loss of the weight of that liquid. That's why in liquid, you feel something very uh, not that heavier. Okay, in swimming pool, you might have uh, seen, you will not find that much heavier, okay, to lift rather on the surface. So, there will be always some uh, apparent loss of the weight of that body, okay. So, that apparent weight of the loss of the body is equal to the amount of water or the weight of the water, what were displaced from that container, that two are equal. This was given by this uh, archiving principle. Okay, uh, you might have seen uh, read in eighth or ninth class there he started sorting eureka, eureka. That means found out, found out, running naked on the street. Okay, so that was uh, he only gave this. So write down about this earthquake principle. What it says it says that when a body is immersed partly wholly in a liquid, there is an apparent loss the weight of the body and this is which is equal to a displaced displaced by the body this is what the archimedes say so this was all about the force of for binance and this archimedes principle made out till now <clears throat> nothing no, tomorrow uh, we'll start one more uh, thing is that related to this there are few more topics. One more class it will take to finish this property of matter. Okay, tomorrow we will finish this. Here, uh, next topic we are going to start will be what? That is law of flotation. Flotation. TATA. Law of flotation. This will start tomorrow. We will see how a body floats and how why a body gets submerged or in the liquid. Okay. So, we will see why this law of flotation. So, till now, any doubt? Understood everything? Yes, sir. Okay. Any doubt you can ask me or tomorrow we'll meet. Okay. It's already 9.45. Okay. See, you be fast in the class. Okay. Try to join 9.30. Then only I can leave you at 9.30. No. Today class started at, uh, at 9.40. Try to join fast. Okay. Okay. Any doubt? Anything? Otherwise, you can leave. Okay. Thank you for your cooperation in the class. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Jain, sir. Jain.